So I had a patient who brought the um, information for the gallery test um, to my attention and just found it really kind of in sync with our naturopathic standards of making sure that we are preventing disease um, I find it a really useful test, um, especially for those who are at increased risk for uh, cancer development um, at some point in their future. Um, So we'll definitely talk about the kind of the ins and outs of this test, um, a little bit behind the methodology. Um, I'm seeing that uh, Josette is here. She's actually our Colorado rep for um, GRAIL, uh, which is the family company for gallery testing. so Josette, go ahead and, and chime in on um, the chat if you want to. Everyone can kind of see her if you're looking at the um, the view. Um, but yeah, so she's she's great as far as the administrative side of things, um, talking about payment plan options, if that's something you'd like to consider with, with Grail um, for the gallery test. But yeah, we'll kind of go into it. Um, yeah, I like I said, I think that this test is really helpful um, as far as making sure that we're really working from a, a preventative mindset. Um, and and the early cancer detection is is something along the lines of that. Um, all right, so let me go ahead and advance the slide. Um, so like I said, we're going to be talking about the the Gale um, Gallery. Grail Gallery Test. It is a multi-cancer early detection test. Um, so the question is, you know, within the naturopathic medical sphere, um, why do we need to um, to look at uh, multi-cancer early detection? You know, what's what's the point? Um, why, you know, if if it's impending, if many of us are going to get cancer, um, you know, it, what's the usefulness of it? Um, and I think, you know, ultimately the usefulness is that we are we're catching cancer earlier through this test um, and and able to see a little bit more too about where potentially that cancer is coming from. So we'll dive into that um, here in a second. All right. Um, so letting it, you all take a read over this, um, cancer is the most feared disease in the, in the United States and it's a leading cause of death. Um, here in the U.S. Uh, We all know someone who has been affected by cancer, um, whether it is um, ourselves directly or um, a loved one or a family member, um, friend, you know, cancer is prevalent in our lives. Um, One in two men um, and one in three women will be diagnosed with cancer at some point in their lifetime. Um, And one in five people will pass from cancer. Um, So it's definitely prevalent in in our modern uh, world today. Um, Okay. Um, so treating cancer starts with knowing that you have it. Um, you know, I think that's the most important bit. Um, it affects all of us. And the most important cancer is the ones that um, we or our loved ones may have. Uh, it starts with knowing that that we have it. Um, so finding cancer early is so important to help improve those treatment outcomes. Um, as the vast majority of cancers show no symptoms until later stages when outcomes are often deadly. Um, You know, we hear about people getting diagnosed with stage three, stage four. Um, At that point, it has spread. Um, The stage really allows for us to figure out how far and widespread um, it has become at that point in time. Um, So when we're finding it earlier on, um, the the treatment outcomes become much more reasonable. Um, They are are, you know, less, um, gosh, I mean, I just think of like the family members of mine who have gone through chemo, who have gone through radiation, who have gone through surgery. Um, if we're finding it early, you know, if we can do a, a small resection, if we end up finding it on imaging, um, those sorts of techniques, those um, interventions that we can bring in really are, they're life-saving and um, less detrimental to our overall health. Okay. Um, Okay, so I I inserted this quiz um, because when we also did this presentation at our open house, so thank you for um, those of you all who came to that as well. Um, Dr. Forsberg brought up, you know, what are the different types of cancer um, that we have routine screenings for? um, And then I put in here bonus points to those who can answer how we screen for these cancers. So um, if anyone wants to throw into the chat the, the different types of cancer that we have routine screenings for. Um, I'd love to hear people's answers of what, what they think. 
And hopefully the chat is available to everyone. Q Jeopardy theme song. Um, I would whistle, but I think, yeah. Okay, so Rochelle says breast cancer. And CA in, um, in medical terminology for us means cancer, <laughs> not always California. Um, context is important there. Anyone else? Oh, no, Rochelle, I, I got what you meant. Maggie says colon cancer. Definitely two of them. Any other thoughts? Okay, James says prostate, absolutely. Any other takers? Maggie says skin with a question mark, okay. I'd say, you know, yeah, we definitely screen for skin cancer. Um, not one that we typically test through like lab work, it's more of a dermatologist. Um, okay, iPhone user says cervical, perfect. We've got one more. Got a very smart bunch here today. All right, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna give it away. Um, let me go to the next slide. So um, the last one is um, lung. So that is that's kind of um, the final test. There's a little bit of a, a caveat there. You'll see the um, the little asterisks. Um, this is generally a, a test done through um, a CT for most of our high risk um, lung cancer uh, potential people. So think um, you know chronic lifelong history of multiple pack per day smokers. Um, but yes, so the the routine screening um, that's recommended, you know, only five cancers out there. Um, I guess we could say skin on top of that with dermatology, but not a lot of people think to look at that. Um, we know that early detection is critical, but, you know, unfortunately, there's only these five individual cancers that have recommended screening for um, today's day and age recommended by um, our different medical bodies, um, USPSTF, the US Preventative Task Force, um, for the cervical and breast side of things, we're usually, oh, okay, we're good. Um, usually looking at um, American College of Gynecology. Um, but yeah, uh, so we're, we're looking at breast, um, colorectal or colon cancer, um, lung, cervical, and prostate. Um, lung screening, like I said, is only really recommended for um, high-risk patients. So um, those who have lots of, um, you know, things entering the lungs that maybe shouldn't. Um, so we think, you know, coal miners or smokers. Um, and most cancers really, you know, they lack any sort of screening tests um, and are typically detected only once symptoms appear. Um, and often this is really kind of too late for effective treatment. We've often had, um, you know, movement of that cancer into different parts of the, the body at that point in time. Um, so it really does kind of limit the effectiveness of our treatment. Okay. <clears throat> Um, so yeah, so as we said, um, you know, one in four cancers have recommended screening for today. Um, as a result, unscreened cancers represent about 70% of cancer deaths and only one in four cancers have that recommended screening. So um, a need exists uh, to have new ways to screen for and to detect um, not only these cancers, but also many of the other um, cancer types. You know, I often think of pancreatic cancer um, as one of the big ones that we don't typically find until stage four, um, where it's causing a lot of um, issues with our digestion, um, causing pain in our back, um, and causing issues with blood sugar regulation. Okay. Um, so finding cancer early really does make a difference. Um, the good news is that early detection and diagnosis of cancer can dramatically improve our survival. Um, on average, when a cancer is detected in early stages before it has spread, um, the overall five-year survival rate is about four times higher than when it was diagnosed in later stages. Um, so that's that's huge for some people. That really gives many more years um, with family and loved ones. Okay. 
Um, oops, make sure I'm not not doing this wrong. Okay. Um, so yeah, so that is where um, the gallery test comes in. So we are um, here at Natural Medicine of Denver now offering the gallery multi-cancer early detection test, um, which is a huge groundbreaking um, advancement in our early cancer detection. Um, we've all had wellness visits, had our blood drawn. Um, so it's very much the same process. It's a simple blood draw, um, but instead of just finding out about your cholesterol levels, um, you have the ability to discover if cancer may be present in your body. Um, and not just if it exists, but also a really strong pr predictor of where in the body it's located. Um, so it's intended to be used in addition to um, and not a direct replacement for other recommended screening tests. But, you know, I think uh, it really is time within our medical communities to start looking at cancer more broadly in addition to the five cancers that we have recommended screening tests for. Okay. Um, all right. So the gallery test um, detects shared cancer signal across more than 50 types of cancer through a simple blood draw. Um, so a few benefits of this test. Um, it detects many cancers without recommended screenings for today. I've um, already kind of referenced a couple of them, but um, think, you know, pancreatic, um, it can, you know, also detect some of the other cancers that we have screenings for. Um, but yeah, some of these other ones that we don't typically find until it's it's really um, kind of on the later side. Um, it can be incorporated into a routine blood uh, a routine visit um, through that simple blood draw. So um, I've been able to do the Dutch, or I'm sorry, the gallery test. <laughs> Brain is. Uh, tired today. Um, been able to do the gallery test in combination with routine blood draws, you know, looking at cholesterol levels, looking at um, our CBC and our metabolic panel. Um, it's done at the very end. It's just two tubes. Um, so if we're already kind of drawing a couple of tubes, it's really easy to just add on to the very end. Um, if a cancer signal is found, the results predict where in the body the cancer is likely coming from. And this really helps us guide our next steps. Um, you know, me as a naturopathic doctor, I it's not within my scope to treat cancer. Um, so, you know, for me, it's it's kind of doing a lot of the legwork to um, help us figure out the diagnosis. We can order appropriate imaging. We can order some other labs as far as inflammatory markers or other cancer markers. Um, so, you know, next steps can include, you know, maybe some of that imaging, um, other tests, other procedures, um, definitely sending people out to the oncologists in the area that we know and trust um, to confirm the, the presence of cancer. Um, but I think even just knowing, you know, likely where the cancer is coming from to a pretty um, significant degree, it, it does give us um, an idea of where to look first. Um, so it's important to note that not all cancers can be detected in the blood or by the gallery test um, as a caveat, but it does find um, a very, a very high number of them. All right. So the next um, page here, how does the gallery test work? Um, so, you know, how does it detect cancer? Um, all of our cells, um, both our cancerous cells and our healthy cells shed DNA into the bloodstream. Um, but it's the DNA from our cancer cells that are different um, than the DNA of our healthy cells. So this test is really um, looking at that DNA in our blood to determine um, if there are, you know, these DNA fragments from cancer cells and where um, it may have come from. Um, if it detects a cancer signal, um, it predicts where in the body the cancer is likely coming from to help guide um, our next steps in our work together to confirm if the cancer is present through some of that additional testing, um, imaging, lab work, um, et cetera. So, um, you know, I think that's it's really helpful because, um, you know, if we're considering lung cancer, if we're considering um, pancreatic cancer um, within our differential list based on people's symptoms, um, this test really helps kind of guide us to that particular spot. Um, and I think what's really cool, so especially for um, some of the, the female reproductive cancers outside of cervical and breast cancer, um, so our ovarian cancer, our uterine cancer, um, it it can give us the the signal there to point towards those particular areas. So if we need to order um, transvaginal ultrasound or um, a, a 
you know, referral made to a um, on oncological um, OBGYN, we can certainly we can certainly do that. Okay. Oops, I just did it again. Sorry. Um, okay. So, who can benefit from this test? Um, so the gallery test is recommended for adults with an elevated risk of cancer, such as those aged 50 and older. Um, it's There's a couple situations that we would not do this test. Um, so it is not recommended if you are pregnant, um, if you are 21 years old or younger, or if you are undergoing active cancer treatment. Um, the reason why, as far as pregnancy goes, is, um, you know, we've got another human. Um, we've got some rapid cell um, division happening um, when we are growing babies. Um, so, it, you know, we would definitely get some, some false, um, false positives there. <laughs> <laughs> um, 21 years old or younger, um, kind of the same idea here. You know, those folks are still growing. Um, growth plates are often still open. Um, and then if you're undergoing active cancer treatment, um, you know, we are working on killing off some of those cancer cells. Um, we will definitely find some of those free DNA fragments um, within the blood in that case. Um, one of the biggest risk factors for many types of cancer is age. Um, in fact, people aged 50 years and older have a 13 times increased risk of cancer compared to our younger populations. Um, so this test is intended to be used in addition to and not a replacement of um, the other recommended cancer screening tests. I don't know how many times I can emphasize that, um, such as mammography, colonoscopy, um, prostate-specific antigen, that PSA blood test, or um, cervical cancer screening, or um, computed CT if we are high risk for lung cancer. Um, but really nice addition to, to those um, screening tests. Okay, um, so the testing process uh, involves three steps. Um, this test is available through prescription only um, or through doctor recommended um, side of things only. Um, after you've received the specimen collection kit, if you are ordering directly from um, Grail, actually, Josette, I'm not sure if that's the case. Can you can you clarify that? They can certainly get it from us. Afterwards. What was the question again? I apologize. Can we, um, can patients order the Grail gallery test directly through Grail at this point? They can, they still need a prescription. However, if you have a patient that may not live in Colorado, that is a remote, you have mm -hmm. the ability of um, basically sending a kit to them and okay. then with our partnership with Quest Diagnostics, they could go to any Quest draw site. So Perfect. you would still really um, be the one to prescribe the test for them. They mm -hmm. can go through our website as well, but it's really nice to have someone that can work as a consult. A yeah, consultation. absolutely. Yeah. Okay, perfect, perfect. Um, so yeah, so we do have, I think we've got a handful of kits here. Um, they are not expired. I double checked. Um, but yeah, so we've got the, the kits here. Um, like I said, it's a pretty easy blood draw. It's two tubes of blood, um, that is collected can be added on top of some of the other standard, or, um, if we're retesting blood for any reason in our work together, um, we can add that test on at the very end. Um, about two weeks later, um, after the blood draw, you should receive the results um, and next steps are, are discussed. Okay. All right. Um, so, like I said, once the, the test is ordered um, or once we complete the blood draw, um, in, in our office, um, or if you were out of state, we can still order it for you, complete it at a Quest Labs near you. Um, we are, we're sent the results, um, we get a follow-up scheduled, and then we can definitely discuss uh, the results um, from, from that test. Okay. Um, oh, and then this uh, here, just for our out-of-state folks, um, the labs, the Quest Labs that they are contracted with um, to get that blood draw. Right. Um, so as far as the results, so um, this is not a sample report. Um, certainly I have access to the sample reports, um, have them 
linked on my website. Um, so when we talk about this, you know, this is kind of the, uh, the example of a potential of what type of uh, results we get. Um, but two possible results. So um, on the left-hand side of this uh, screen, you will see no cancer signal detected. Um, <clears throat> and on the right side, what we see is cancer signal detected um, with their, their pink um, coloring here. Um, so most results will be negative, meaning that a cancer cell was not detected. Um, there is a 1% to 2% cancer incidence in the population. So, um, you know, if I were to run 100% of, or run 100 tests, um, you know, 98% of, 98, 99% of these tests will come back with no cancer signal detected. Um, this result means that a cancer signal was not found. Um, so not all cancers can be detected by um, through the blood um, through this gallery test. So it's important to, you know, continue with all the other recommended screening tests that are appropriate for you. Um, you know, we don't want to miss any sort of screening tests or ignore symptoms that can lead to a delayed diagnosis of cancer. Um, in the case that a cancer signal is detected, it means that there is a suspicion of cancer, um, but it's not a diagnosis of cancer. So this test is very predictive in that it tells us where in the body the cancer is likely coming from to help um, me and Dr. Forsberg um, guide next steps and additional testing needed to confirm um, whether or not the, the cancer is pregnant um, or present, excuse me. <laughs> um, this test looks for a cancer signal um, present at the time of your blood draw. It does not measure your genetic risk um, of developing cancer in the future. So it's not a BRCA test. It's not um, some of these other, you know, wrinkle tests um, that are looking at a genetic propensity towards developing cancer. Um, so what GRAIL recommends is annual screening, um, which provides us the opportunity to detect cancers, um, more cancers early on. Um, it can help you determine if, um, if and when the cancer to early cancer detection screening gallery test um, is needed again, but I think a yearly rate is pretty, um, pretty useful. Okay. Um, so we, we have a learn more um, slide here. Um, this next slide, if you want to take a screenshot of it, um, definitely some, some helpful links, phone numbers, um, a QR code, which I might be able to zoom in on if anyone wants to take a really quick um, photo side of that. Um, there is information here about the cost and coverage for the gallery test. Um, I believe that there are also um, payment plan options through gallery um, that are available if, um, you know, if a one-time payment is uh, a little bit too much out of pocket. Um, and then, Josette, we are able to use um, HSA and FSA cards, correct? Uh, so... I what I would recommend is for everyone to contact their own FSA HSA company and just confirm. Um, I've been with the company close to a year. I have not heard of a denial, but every HSA uh, FSA company has their own guidelines, if you will. Mm -hmm. So definitely um, check just to confirm and. Yes, we do offer um, a 12 month payment plan, 0% uh, interest, uh, which comes down to about set, which comes down to not about, but $79 uh, a month. So okay. we really do want to try to make this um, easy for everyone mm -hmm. that would like to get this test um, to do so. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, Hopefully everyone got a screenshot of that or, you know, was able to scan that QR code if needed. Um, certainly we have more information here at the practice. So if anyone wants to pop in, um, grab some brochures, you know, um, take, take some pictures on your phone of um, the information that we've got here, we certainly have that available as well. Okay. Um, and then this last slide would love to just leave a minute of me not talking so people can take a read over this. Um, 
but let me just kind of give the the bullet points. Um, so just as a reminder, the gallery um, test does not detect all cancers. It's important to use it in addition to our routine screening tests. Um, a positive result still needs to be confirmed through additional testing. Um, but yeah, it's available and a really great option. Um, I think too, we've even got, um, there's some legislature um, initiatives in place to start seeing if this could be covered by insurance. So um, I think the, the um, there's no consensus there yet, but um, it's on it's on the, the Capitol. I mean, I guess if people want to take a screenshot of that too, um, definitely important safety information. All right. Um, so that is the gallery test by Grail. I always, I always mix them up. <laughs> um, but yeah, if anyone has any questions, I'd love to um, kind of field them in the chat. Um, hopefully I can answer them. Josette, I'm so grateful that you're here too, because you definitely have a lot more familiarity with the administrative part of um, of the test, but we'll just kind of leave that open. Let me go to the last slide real quick and Nicole um, can talk about some of the 